thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. All right, so welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we want to go over some uh, failures on this golf cart body. Maybe you're prepping out your golf cart body to do some paint on. I know a lot of people are customizing these. We do a lot of these. We've actually got quite a few on the channel uh, that we've done some pretty co crazy co colors. Some of them are mixed in our uh, Paper Chaser series, which is our work weeks uh, series. Some of them are kind of thrown in there. And then there's a handful of videos where we have actually went over how to paint these things and prep these things out. 100% uh, with their own videos. So let me flip the camera around first and show you how somebody jacked up this golf cart body. Now my customer did not do this first off. Uh, he flips golf carts and this is a body he got his hands on. He said the bodies are getting harder to find uh, used for good prices. Um, so he wanted to know if we could bring this one back to life. Now we went over in a previous video the dangers of this hard line right here. When you get these golf cart bodies and uh, they have this hard line in them. We have a previous video on how to get rid of hard lines if you want to search back through our channel, uh, our paintwork and stuff like that. And that will show you how to address that issue. So we're not going to go over that because we've already done pretty much a whole video on that. I'm pretty sure the hard line video was a fluorescent pink golf cart, I think. Um, could be wrong. But just look back through our videos uh, and check the golf cart videos out. And I've got all kinds of pointers on this. So this piece right here has no issues with it. There's really nothing we got to fix on that. Um, let's see here. There's some paint chip right here. We need to handle these paint chips, but that's all pretty basic stuff. Uh, our primary focus on this video is going to be this body right here. Uh, so not only do we got to deal with the hard lines that are all in here, um, we're going to have to get rid of them. Uh, the customer doesn't need anything spectacular on this one. He actually said he's okay if some of the hard lines are left behind on this one. Um, because he's kind of just using, using up something. So somebody tried to fiberglass repair this thing. Um, you never, never do that. Fiberglass just doesn't work on this stuff. Um, so we are going to go through here and undo everything that somebody has done and then show you how to fix it. So this golf cart body is completely split right here on the edge all the way down it. And this is not the easiest repair. I told him that we would give it a go. I told him we should be able to do it. Um, yeah, but we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's hopefully it's doable. It's gonna take a little bit of work. So we're gonna remove this felled fiberglass. It's not even sticking, you can see. It's not even adhered to it. That's the issue. When people try to do this fiberglass stuff, um, they just do it wrong. And you really shouldn't even be fiberglass and plastic parts like this at all. So uh, let's see if we can pop some of this off. All right, so let's get our screwdriver. Look at that. See, that's not, it's not adhered at all. There's no strength to this repair at all number one it's the wrong product okay you should be using a plastic pair like we have went over a hundred times on this channel we're about to go over again and you've got to prep it so let's see if this is even prepped i'm curious if whoever did this even prepped it and like i said my customer did not do this he snagged this body just to use all right so yeah that's not even prepped okay so none of this is even sanded. You can see the reflection? None of this is even sanded. Paint products don't adhere to glossy surfaces. Surfaces. So it don't matter pretty much anything you're using in the paint industry, no matter what the product is or the bodywork industry, anything, it has to be uh, prepped out. Um, so I'm gonna finish popping off what I can off of this, and then we're gonna get our grinder and we're gonna prep all these out and then I'll show you our cracks that we have to work with. All right, so what we use pretty much primary to prep this thing is just a Harbor Freight 90 degree grinder with grinding dish. You can pick these up. I don't know if Harbor Freight sells them or not, but if not, you can pick them up on Amazon. If you need to know what they are, I'll show you the part number real fast because uh, I know it's been a couple videos probably since we've showed them. Uh, so this is going to be 3M. That's the part number 01397. These are, uh, let's see here if it says the grit. 36 grit, right here in front of my face. So they come in a box, multiple ones. I use that thing on a lot, okay? If you're gonna be doing race cars or anything, you really need to go ahead and order you one of these and get you 90 degrees. Uh, we did make a cut with this. Uh, it's just another 90 degree grinder with a cutoff wheel. Uh, the one I did on that is I made a slit like that, a long slit. So I went through here, and I'll explain all this here in one second. Um, went through here and grinded back all the paint. So we're gonna do a plastic repair. You can't be doing plastic repair on top of paint. Plastic repair needs to go on plastic. Um, 
So we've come in here and we've gouged open our cracks extremely, extremely big, okay? So we want to have a big crack. You don't want just crack on the surface because then you can't get nothing in it. So you want to V-notch it pretty much, you know, put V's in it so that you can actually get it down in there. So all of these we have took, and the camera focus, and as you can see, we have, it's hard, but we have ran the grinder down in every single one of these, cleaned all the edges up on these uh, where it's just straight plastic. So there's not no old paint left. There's not no old fiberglass left or nothing like that. All this area right here does not get uh, repaired. And no, we still gotta do that one. I actually need to go ahead and be notched that because I'm probably gonna forget that one. Um, but we've come through here and just cleaned all of this out, cut this thing open um, extreme. As you can see, I mean, it's completely, completely cut open, but we have just cleaned up every edge. So basically everywhere there's a crack, needs to be v-notched the best you can with your grinder make a v a channel out of it so that it can go down in there or at least clean it up like even on this one right here we basically cut it at this angle on this piece and in this piece right here we also kind of cut it that angle you could take this one and cut it back at that angle but then you don't have the two pieces really going together so i kind of wanted these to go on top of each other back together so i just wanted to clean up both sides uh, where you want filler to fall down in like this, you kind of want the V-notch, okay? Or on top of a surface, you know, if you can get a little V-notch cut out. You normally only want to V-notch it 50% of the thickness of that. So you just kind of want it to slope out so it's like a trough so it kind of can uh, fill inside there. When they're split up this bag, it's kind of hard. Just make sure you get it cleaned up the best you can. Uh, get all the fiberglass off. I had this piece flipped over upside down and I cannot get to the bottom side. So this is so far up in there. I mean, I guess you could try to pull this thing way back and get up in there, but you're not really gonna be able to do much. So I chose to do all of my work from the top of this panel. And we're basically gonna just get the filler down in there versus building a patch, a scab across the backside because we're not gonna be able to scab it up inside here. I mean, it's just really hard to get up in there. And the way this is actually torn right here, it's pretty unique. Let me see if I can camera right there. Is it actually, um, you can, let's see here if we can move this open. If you can see that it split uh, the plastic in half. So all of this right here, okay, is um, still plastic. So it's not split all the way through. So it's kind of created a pocket right here. That's why it's dark right down in there besides where you can see the light right here because the plastic actually split in half so the thickness of the plastic split in half so it's formed a sleeve that we've got to get filler down in there squish so you can't you don't there's really no scabbing on the back side of this so that's where we're at right now we're going to get our plastic uh, repair put in our gun we're going to start filling this in we went through here normally i use clamps i use all types of clamps to clamp stuff together and hold it but when you've got something just demolished you're going to have to stitch it up put stitches in it and that's with zip ties uh, so we have went ahead and drilled them. So we're not, because your plastic repair has a really fast set time on a lot of stuff. Um, so we went ahead and drilled them, fed our zip ties through, but left them all loose so we can open everything up. Once we get it filled in, all of this mess, then we will tighten all of our zip ties down and it should pull all of our cracks tight to hold it over uh, night. We're probably just gonna let this one dry all overnight. Uh, I mean, you can follow the directions on the tube, but we just will probably let this one sit for today. And then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll take our grinder again and we will cut all the zip ties off on the face. We'll leave the back ones on there, it don't matter. But we'll go ahead and cut all, grind all the face off, grind all the excess off. And then if there's any areas we miss, we will V-notch it again, put more in there and then we'll be good to go. So let me V-notch this one, open this one up. Uh, this one can really be scabbed across the back, but I still wanna get this gap open a little bit more and uh, we'll get some uh, stuff in the gun and we'll get this thing uh, filled up and I'll show y'all how to do that. All right, so this is the product we're using, 3M, uh, part number, as you can see, 04240. The, let's see here, the cure time, that's gonna say right here on the side, is gonna be one hour. Sand it, you can sand it here in 15 minutes, but your work time, you only got 50 seconds. And I promise you, you don't actually have 50 seconds. That stuff is gonna harden up uh, way faster than that, so you gotta be ready to rock and roll. You should be wearing gloves, uh, but I don't have any right now. Left them in the Tahoe, combined them this weekend, so we're just gonna rock and roll like this. The gun, if you need to order this gun, it's gonna be 08571, it's a 3M uh, applicator gun. It's for all of the uh, products like this that we use, handle bond and all that stuff. So we're gonna start out, let's see here, probably on this hardest one right here. We're just gonna work it in. 
try to make sure you get it down in the crack. That's where most of your strength's gonna come from. We'll go ahead across the top. And I'm putting a ton in here to make sure that it oozes everywhere. So you gotta make sure you open it up enough to get it in there. We'll go ahead and pause. And you gotta work fast because that nozzle will dry up. And then you're gonna be wasting the nozzle and having to change another nozzle. don't want to have to use another nozzle so you kind of want to go ahead and rock and roll all at once got all that we're just gonna hit this little one right here all on this one right here it's not really it's cracked but it's not like it's um it needs to be choked down it's just split open yeah you like that ed yeah. try to go ahead and get some in all of the zip tie holes also while i have this out because then that way we don't have to come back and fill in zip tie holes tomorrow we can just cut our zip ties flush. It should be good to go. Did you chunk them out? Yep. And you can see it's already it's already hardening up. You try to take your mixing stick and stir them up. Normally I have Eddie help me with these, like spread this out as I'm pumping some other ones, but they decided not to do that today. I said, I don't think you really got 50 seconds. I mean, you ain't got 50 seconds of actually working with it because it's already so hardened up that you can't, I mean, like that right there, we're gonna have to grind all of that down. That's gonna be that. We'll let that dry up. So everywhere is pretty much covered. Like I said, it would have been nicer if I should have had him uh, smoothing all this out as I was putting it on. Because now tomorrow, which is not a big deal, you can take that grinder, but you can see that clump right there. Like there's a giant clump right there. That's gonna have to be cut down. You don't want to try to sand that with sandpaper. Cause this just gonna go slow as crap. You want to use that nine degree angle, but at 36. So all that looks pretty good on the outside for right now. What we'll do is after this dries tomorrow, we will flip this over, see if we can access anything now from the backside that looks like accessible, worth it. And if so, we'll try to get what we can from the backside, but more than likely from what it looked like on this one is you're not getting nothing from the backside. All right, next day on this guy, uh, we have let it dry overnight and we've cut our little pigtails off of our zip ties. And then we're gonna come in here and just grind all this down so you can see you know, now with all the zip ties off, the mess that's uh, kind of left behind, because like I said, I was doing it by myself and didn't really get it to uh, smooth out before it dried up. So now we're going to just come back in here with a 90 degree um, grinder, and we're just going to start grinding all the pieces down. All right, so we got all this grinded out. Um, as you see, this is just roughed out with that uh, 36 grit. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm now going to take the DA sander and do 180 over everything um, to smooth it out more. And then we're going to move into either dolphin glaze or just straight primer, depending on how this smoothed out. Uh, so this turned out pretty good. And honestly, I've been pulling on it. I mean, it, it feels really solid. I was going to go from the bottom side 
and try to uh, brace it up some, you know. But man, I don't know. I feel I feel pretty good right now about this repair. I mean, it feels like it's got a lot of strength. This is the only one that doesn't, and you can actually see right here how that's already kind of like cracked. And that's what happens when you try to just do two butt joints together, and there's no um, uh, no meat to it because there's nothing on the bottom. So we'll probably come on the bottom of this one and try to V-notch some of this and get this again. I know this piece doesn't matter really because uh, the seat covers up and the customer even said, you know, not in, he's not so much worried about in here because the seat covers it up. But I'd like to get it if possible. If all of this turns out good and I don't have to pull the uh, uh, gun back out for um, the plastic repair, then we won't be doing anything with this because every single time I pull that gun out, not only am I using material, but I'm also using up a nozzle um, and that stuff is not cheap. All right, this is after your 180 grit. Um, so we're gonna come in here with some dolphin glaze now and fill in the little imperfections. Also our body line goes from here, as you can see, to here. This is the body line, it goes around. Um, so we need to put that back in it because it kind of disappears here. This is humped out some right here. It's gonna be hard, you can kind of see right there, okay? That's just from where the plastic ripped. You're not gonna be nothing, you're not gonna be able to really do nothing about that. Um, you can heat this up with you know, the heat gun and try to collapse that in enough that you can slick all this out with filler. But then the problem is now you have uh, body filler on here and the more filler you put on here and this body flexes, then the body filler can crack. So you kind of got to pick and choose your battles. Do you want this to be slightly humped out right here and distorted? Or do you want this to be in perfectly straight and have body filler on here and take a chance of cracking body filler? in the future because golf carts you know they rattle a lot go over a lot of stuff so i'm going to choose not to put body filler on this we're just going to do dolphin glaze dolphin glaze is a lot more flexible than body filler and um we're going to just focus on getting our body line there and filling in perfections so it's going to have a real light skim coat of dolphin glaze over it and not actually a bunch of thick filler so we're going for all of these imperfections that are in here the dolphin glaze will fill all that in and then we'll probably do a little bit inside here but we're not going to be I don't know, probably won't do nothing in here actually. Um, we'll just hit all this with primer. So we'll just do heavy primer all inside here and then block it out because this is again all behind the seat. And the customer has said, again, not to worry about anything that really gets hid behind the seat. They just kind of wanted to get the outside fixed. And so uh, I think we are definitely on the right track to success here on this. So let's get some dolphin glaze mixed up. So for the dolphin glaze, we are using this U pull, uh, UP0714 is going to be the part number if you put that in on amazon or ebay you should be able to find this stuff and get it um delivered right to your door so mix this up with your hardener this is what the hardener looks like it comes with it um if you run out of this hardener then you can use um uh, your regular body filler hardener any hardener will pretty much work for it with body filler all right we got this thing all washed out dawn dish soap water scuff pad clean everything up but before that we got everything sanded out uh Got our body line back, as you can see right there. It's still gonna be a little curvy because this is poked out. So it's not gonna be uh, exact, uh, exactly perfect. Got the inside pretty decently cleaned up. Again, not perfect. Did not mess with that because we didn't end up having to do anything to this. All of this stuff feels really, just really amazingly uh, good. So I'm not gonna bust it back out, uh, the gun back out for that. But we're gonna shoot this with a 2K primer. We're gonna go ahead and coat the whole body. I didn't sell the job as a primer all over um, job but since i'm doing this right here i'm gonna just go ahead and try to do a coating all over to try to get rid of the hard lines for the customer uh, just try to put out a better product um, i'm gonna try to make sure that on all of this part of the cart that um, we kind of flow coat the primer so we're gonna try to get our primer to lay out really smooth so that we don't have to cut orange peel out so that hopefully it doesn't slow me down um, too much more. This already has took an extreme amount of time to get all this uh, back uh, in this good of shape. I'm actually really impressed with how how this has turned out. Um, we did the same thing with this one. Went ahead and sanded all this out. This is in 180 grit and then scotch braided just to make sure we have adhesion on the areas that we didn't sand out. Um, and again, we're going to try to just kind of flow coat these parts where the primer lays out really good so we don't have to necessarily sand out orange peel. So let's get our primer mixed up. All right, so we got that thing primed all out. Um, this should fill in all of your lines that were in there before. Like I said, I've went over all this in depth on other videos. Um, but yeah, uh, ignore my run right here. 
I don't mind showing my flaws. I had a pinhole, as you can see right there, that I got mad at. I hammered it on there. Um, had another little sag right here, pinhole I was fighting with. It kind of annoyed me. Um, inside here looks pretty good. So this is all just rough, remember? We just pounded a lot of primer on top of it. And we're gonna block all of our primer out. We pounded our lips, our edges on pretty decently thick. Even though you don't see none of this, we'll block this all out, sand it out, not really block it out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these, these pieces look great. Uh, this is basically, you know, this gets you all the way to your sand, your, your primer step. Um, you know, the next coat, next step is going to be to lay some guide coat on it. Sim 382030. Um, that's going to be your part number on that. And this is just going to allow you to be able to see what you're doing whenever you go to sand. Now, we're not going to go into the sanding and the paint process of this because we have already done that. Um, on this channel a couple times so you can look back at other golf cart videos I imagine if you just type in golf cart on my channel You'll probably see quite a few uh, or a handful of videos on how to paint these things So I don't want to bore anybody that's here just for the plastic repair, but that gets you repaired man That gets you right there all the way up to the sanding steps um, From here. It's just gonna be your normal traditional um, Steps to sand and prep for paint, you know, it's not not gonna be anything out of the ordinary it's just gonna be normal there's guide coat this is how we do guide coat we just go all over you just want that spackling everywhere that way when we go to sand this thing out we can see our imperfections this stuff works amazing if you got somebody doing body work for you and they're not laying guide coat in the pictures or videos or whatever you stop by and see your car and they're blocking with no guide coat you need to get your car out of there There you go. Like I said, minus the runs, which they're gonna block right out when we go to sand it. That's all repaired. So hopefully this helps you with your golf cart and hopefully you don't make the mistakes of putting fiberglass on or hopefully you don't have to deal with this with your projects. Um, and if you were thinking about doing fiberglass, put that fiberglass down right now. Take it back to Walmart, park store, wherever you got it from, get your money back. Go purchase some plastic repair and do it the right way you'll be way happier with the outcome of your product um, i think that's going to be it for this video um, let me know if you have any questions make sure you check out the other videos because we have plenty of videos to get you through the priming the painting the prepping lots of details on this channel thanks y'all